A tablet, computer in every child's hand. We look at technology in today's classroom. Do kids learn better? Also, we look at the tech companies that are vying to get their gadgets in the hands of students. I'm Afan Chaudhary. Welcome to Globe Now. There is a tech revolution happening in classrooms across Canada. Computers and tablets provided by schools and students being allowed to bring their own devices. Behind this trend is a strong belief that technology opens up all kinds of learning possibilities. So let's look at one school board. In Hamilton Wentworth, the plan is to have every student from grades 4 till 12 equipped with iPads by 2019. John Malloy is the Director of Education and he joins me now. Welcome, John. Great to be here. What is the single most important reason to do this? We want to change learning for kids. They need to be engaged, they need to be on fire with what they're learning, and we believe that if we change the learning that the technology can support it. So uh, describe how it'll work. Are these tablets you know, that students are going to use in the classroom only? So no, the tablets are theirs. Just like we would have had notebooks and binders 20 years ago or even two years ago, the tablets are their tool as part of how they will learn. So what we plan to do is invite the students to change how they think about learning. It's about the wide, wide world that's out there that technology allows our kids to connect with and the expertise of amazing teachers who helps guide that process. Now I get the pressure to bring technology into the classroom, but what does the research say about learning outcomes? When students are engaged, when they can be creative, when they can analyze, when they can think, when they can create something new collaboratively and individually, it makes a huge difference for their learning. That doesn't mean we don't teach the basics, mm. but that makes a difference. How are you going to be sure that putting tablets into the classroom is going to be used as an effective teaching tool? You've got to bring teachers along, presumably. Yes. One, we are so committed to how we're supporting teachers. We're learning every time teachers come together about what's happened. This is not something that's going to be a rigid process. This is something that we're going to learn from as well. We're all learners in this. I imagine that you've thought of the pitfalls. I can see one, you know, where the teacher says, students put down your tablets and no one listens. They're distracted yes. by the technology. What are some of the pitfalls that you've imagined? Some are worried that they're going to be attached to them all the time. That's not the case. Mm. The other thing we need to do is to be sure that we are actually not simply doing what we've always done on a tablet. If we're going to use the technology, then we have to be sure that it's taking us to places that we presently aren't going. The other worry people have is that students won't take care of the tablet. We are letting them take them home mm -hmm. because we trust them. If we don't give them that opportunity, what are we saying about their ability to be responsible, to take ownership for their learning? So that's another piece that's a challenge. Who resisted the idea? Anyone who is really nervous about change got a little bit resistant, but not a terrible resistance. What I mean by that is we've been talking about technology in classrooms and schools, I've been almost 30 years, hmm. and we've been doing it that long. But in order to make something really happen that's transformational, I said to my board, we gotta move this to everyone. We cannot just rely on individual schools raising money for technology or individual programs happening in certain classrooms. It has to be everyone, and we needed a systemic approach for that. Now, does the board get these computers at some discounted price? Well, what we do is we work very closely with our partners to be sure that we get the best possible opportunities. But I want to be really clear and say that this isn't about adding more money to the budget. There mm. isn't any more money. When we look across a year at how many paper-based resources we use, mm -hmm. and then we see how those resources could also then purchase the technology, we're finding that we were able to create a business case that our trustees were willing to accept. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, we want to hear from you. How important is technology to classroom learning? Share your experiences, whether you're a teacher or a parent or a student. Tweet us at Globe Now. So we're hearing about Apple iPads in one district school board, but it's not the only company that is trying to get its products and software into the classroom. The Globe's technology editor, Shane Dingman, looks at the other tech race going on in Canada's classrooms. Take a look. If your last year in elementary or high school was more than, say, five years ago, you might not recognize a lot of the digital tech finding its ways into the hands of students. Once upon a time, Windows was the only operating system in the computer lab. The art or media department may have had some Macs, but that was it. Now the game has changed. The arrival of the super sexy iPad took computing out of the lab. The ultra cheap Google Chromebooks have made internet powered laptops more accessible. Many Windows-based PCs are markedly cheaper too. Some are as low as $500. And the Windows Surface machines would be an excellent and powerful classroom device if only the price was right. 
Apple's App Store is holding an array of free and paid education software so vast I can't even begin to summarize it. But one service the platform now offers is a program to create unique Apple IDs for kids under the age of 13. It limits ad tracking, it doesn't connect to a credit card, and it requires notification and consent of parents for any major account changes. When the user turns 13, Apple then converts the account to adult status. iTunes U, the company's textbook service, is another way Apple is trying to wedge itself into your lives through school and beyond. Google is trying to make paperless classrooms a reality. Teachers can now post assignments, collect papers, and even connect and collaborate with students who need help. All homework and marking can be done in the cloud. Not to be outdone, a touch-enabled version of Microsoft Office 365 with some of the same collaboration features is finally available for Apple's mobile devices. And it's not as expensive as it used to be. And let's not forget OneNote. Microsoft's note-taking app is free and available on Android and iOS. This may all sound like too many options, but keep in mind, the competition to convert your kids to one of these platforms means that the technology will only get cheaper while the software gets more powerful. Well, that's all for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter. How important do you think technology is in the classroom? And which company, in your experience, has the edge? Tweet us at GlobeNow. I'm Afan Chaudhary. Thanks for watching. 